Psalm 32 verse 1 to 11, through the Bible. Psalm 32, part 1. Theme, a psalm of instruction. This psalm has been called a spiritual gem, yet it has been misunderstood. The title is, A Psalm of David, Maskil. Maskil means to give instruction or to understand. This Hebrew word is used especially as it relates to the future of Israel. I can't help but think of the seminaries today that have gone intellectual, depending on high-powered personalities and promotional programs and that type of thing to sell themselves. They emphasize the intellectual. It would be nice if they would turn to this psalm and find out that God has a future for Israel, but it requires a little spiritual gumption to get the point. I want you to see how the word maskil is used in connection with the nation Israel. In Daniel 11 verse 33 we read, And they that understand, maskil, among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil, many days. Again, in Daniel 11 verse 35 we read, And some of them of understanding, maskil, shall fall, to try them, and to purge, and to make them white, even to the time of the end. Because it is yet for a time appointed. Daniel 12 verse 3 says, And they that be wise maskil, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. In Daniel 12 verse 10 we read, Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise, maskil, shall understand. In the New Testament, the Lord Jesus, in speaking of the time of the trouble, coming in the future for the nation Israel, says in Matthew 24 verse 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, maskil. The Lord was saying that when they see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, it is time to run for their lives. I don't know what the abomination of desolation is. I have gone through quite a few books by men who thought they knew what it is. It took some of them two or three chapters to make it clear that they didn't know what it is. I can say it in one sentence. I don't know what it is. I am not looking for the abomination of desolation. I am looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that at the end of Matthew 24 verse 15 the Lord said, Whoso readeth, let him understand. In the book of Revelation, chapters 6 to 18, we are told more about the great tribulation period. In Revelation 13, which tells us about two beasts and the world dictatorship that is coming, we read, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Revelation 13 verse 18. Numerous books have been written about the number 666. Do you want to know what that number means? I can give you an answer. I don't know. Those who have written the books about the number 666 don't know either, they just think they know. It will be a day when God will reveal himself to his people. Psalm 32 is a masculine psalm. It will be instruction for God's people in a future day. Right now, it is a psalm of instruction for us. Psalm 32 has been called a penitential psalm, that is, a confession of David. I disagree with that. Psalm 51 is David's prayer of confession after Nathan said to him, Thou art the man. 2 Samuel 12 verse 7. In that psalm he asks for forgiveness. In Psalm 32 is the record of the confession, the forgiveness received, and the blessedness of his complete restoration. In Psalm 51 verses 12 and 13 David says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. 
David promises if the Lord will forgive him for his sin that he will teach sinners his ways. That is what David is doing in Psalm 32, instructing. So Psalm 32 is not a penitential psalm, but one of instruction. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalm 32 verse 1. David is giving instruction here. He is telling us that he had made his confession to God, was forgiven, and had found complete restoration. He found shelter in God and was given a song of deliverance. The word blessed in this verse means happy. We have seen this word before in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Psalm 1 verse 1. The blessedness in Psalm 1 is that which only a perfect man can enjoy. I don't know about you, but I am not perfect. Psalm 1 actually speaks of the Lord Jesus who was the perfect man. Blessed is the man that walketh not, that standeth not, and that sitteth not, paraphrase mine. That tells what the perfect man does not do. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Verse 2. That law condemns us. It did not condemn the Lord Jesus Christ. The law written in commandments and ordinances cannot give man blessedness. It demands a perfect obedience which man cannot attain, and thus it pronounces a curse on him. Galatians 3 verse 10 tells us, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. There is no man who can honestly say that he measures up to God's law. If you can say that you measure up to the law, then you can ask the Lord Jesus to move over from the right hand of God, because that is your seat. You are perfect. Friend, neither you nor I are perfect, but the Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. In Psalm 32 verse 1, it is the blessedness of a man whose sin has been forgiven. Christ died for our sins, and in his death as substitute for sinners, he met and satisfied the righteousness of God. So now the holy God can be a just God and a Savior. He can be just and the justifier of all those who believe in Jesus. When faith is exercised in Christ, it is counted for righteousness. In Romans 4 verse 5 we read, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. In this way thousands of Old Testament believers, beginning with Adam and Eve who looked for the seed of the woman, were saved in anticipation of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. David is expressing the blessedness the happiness of a man whose sins had been forgiven.